like, no, I haven't gotten my sh shizness together. <laughs> I did see my last video and I mean, to be completely honest, I think I have, and it's taken a long, long time to get here. But of course, I'm not gonna focus on that. Let me see, let me, let me lower this down. I feel like this too, so I can back up. So I wanted to come into my channel and just kind of give everybody an update about what's been going on since the last time I did my update video with my mental health journey and what I've been going through, my relationship, all that stuff. Where, where do I start? I mean, 2020, 2020, I mean, 2020. <laughs> it started off with a bang. I mean, the first month I went through something that I can't really talk about it's still here on camera because it's personal and a lot of people close to me don't really know that this occurred. And I just don't think it's fair that I say it here and not to my family members. So something did happen in January that was medically, I guess you would say like emotionally draining and sad. Um, maybe some of you can figure out what that is, but January was pretty tough. I had to make a decision, made the decision. And during all that, during that time, I still hadn't gone to therapy. The couples therapy stuff was not happening, you know, um, didn't prioritize it, focused on my job too much, focused on my social media content. I just didn't really focus enough on my relationship. And later on, obviously, I realized that I was using that as an escape me mechanism for me to escape my, you know, what I didn't want to face. But 2020 kind of made you like slow the down and say, hey, who are you? <laughs> you know? What are you doing? What are things that you need to change or not, you know? <laughs> so that was a little tough the first month. And then by February, I went through like a family crisis where a family member went through a psychosis and a spiritual awakening. I don't know what you can call it. It was a lot because of what they were disclosing, what they were saying. It really tapped in, into, that. that's what sparked my interest in, in tapping into the spiritual world and learning about the spiritual world uh, in February because I was trying to look for answers. You know, I didn't, I, I didn't know how to help my family members. So I started researching and I was like, what happens with me is I always try to find answers to things that don't make any sense. And when I read the book, The Ford's Agreements, that's one of the things that he's, they talk about how, you know, we as humans are so curious, we want an answer. And sometimes there isn't, you know, um, and that's okay. But it, with doing all that research, I, I went down a rabbit hole and that's when I started researching about, um, I don't know, I just started researching on, on Disneyland and MK Ultra, and I, I went into this thread and it just took me down this really trippy <laughs> rabbit hole where I learned about a lot of the allegations that occurred in the park in the 50s, the MK Ultra, um, things that happened to children and what they were doing and allegedly they were being given like LSD, all that stuff. And then of course, then I fell into this other I'm sorry. You know, what can you do? Then how you put it out there? <laughs> if it bugs you, just ignore it. <laughs> um, I was just kind of, that's what kind of got, got me into the Hollywood and the pedophilia and all that stuff, which at that time I was like losing my mind because I was having clients and that were reporting certain things that correlated too much to what I was researching and it just scared the sh out of me like it really scared me I thought I was being tested because I'm telling you these things that this child was disclosing was very alarming you know and of course I reported it and thankfully the person got moved but there were still so many things that just it scared me because the things that he was he was saying and then my my family member was saying similar things and I was like how is this like how is this integrating you know and 
then I started questioning things and the position I was in. And then I just was like, just lost basically, which then eventually, and then, and then it triggered me to like comment on a lot of like celebrities, influencer, influencer Instagram pages and kind of asking them what the flip like why are you guys not advocating about what's going on with like the children in the industry and I don't know I guess I just learned that I can't really have high expectations this is something that um I had heard Peter Mon say about like that you just have to lower down your expectations you can't really expect people to want them to do what you want them to do in regards to the things that you're passionate about but at the time of course like that was my only way to control the situation like i felt like if i said something it would kind of like spark like what you know and then them research or whatever and look into it um but obviously you know my approach wasn't that i remember when i did it because I, I remember i commented like on patrick stars but i think it was um even the Kina Dragon, like I, I commented on Kina Dragon stuff. I commented on <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio page. Like, I think I still, I, I saved it. I screenshot it. I even commented on the Camp Kardashians YouTube channel. Like, you know, when they post a com community post and I commented like, what the heck are you guys doing? Like, I understand you're here to entertain us, but come on, man. Like, do something about this whole child stuff that's going on in the industry. Like, what's going on? You know, and at the time... Now that I know more and I understand the circumstances and how some people can't say anything and some people can and some people just choose not to. I mean, yeah, but that's that's what I ended up doing. I ended up commenting on a lot of people's like stuff, like coming off very hostile and hurt and distraught because I know that I, I was in my work position and then I was thinking oh my gosh I can't do nothing here so I felt like maybe I could do something here and I, at the end of it I went back and I deleted I hope I deleted all of them because I was like what the heck you know like I even commented on Kuko's, Kuko's thing I commented on even musicians I commented on um oh I forgot her name her name but she's she's an edm artist i commented on a lot of people's stuff and i kind of wanted to come here and say sorry for for doing that you know for adding stress and coming off in a very like hostile mean way it's just, just i could have done it differently i could have emailed you know i could have emailed i could have dm'd and said hey do you guys know about this like can we do something to 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 work together as a team and combat this and then, you know, leave it at that. Um, but of course, you know, it was very emotional. I was, I, I know that a lot of it had to do with, with, with my relationship because when you don't feel like you have control of things, you try to control other things and then you try to control other people and it's like, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, you just, you can't control other people. But at that moment, I think I was just like, I felt like I didn't have anything else to do but to speak up and say something and then, I, and then I, of course, like my decision was, you know, I deleted the comments and then I just unfollowed a lot of people in the beauty industry and even celebrities too, because I just kind of, I wanted to do a reset and I wanted to like, just wait until um, I guess I'm ready to trust because in a way I, I kind of don't, I, I feel like I can't trust anybody because no one's really talking about this. And then when people do they're scared about it or they feel like they're gonna get shadow banned or they feel like no one's gonna wanna work with them. So I don't know. So I wanted to say sorry. Like I really do wanna say sorry for, for doing that. It's been on my mind, you know, that I, I wanted to say sorry to everybody who saw that comment. And you know, if I hurt them in any way, that, you know, that wasn't my intention. And uh, you know, I was, I was really upset and I take full accountability that it was based on my my just inability to control things and i kind of lashed out on on people that was just it's easy 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 to lash out with people that you feel like they're not going to respond and or hoping that they'll respond you know i guess i just wanted an answer and no one was giving me an answer even in my work position i wasn't really getting answers and i kind of you know just let it go but yeah so i went through all that and then the a lot of things started coming forward with that whole documentary of Out of Shadows, which confirmed everything that I researched. And I was like, 
why is this happening? And, you know, ultimately I kind of just realized that there's not much that I can do, but only just educate and figure out like a plan. Like what can I do to shed light into this issue so we can find solutions? You know, um, I can't, like I said, I can't expect people to talk about this, especially when they're already at their, I guess they've reached their goals in regards to their brand and stuff. That was a lot. Like, I'm not even playing. Like, I know that I've already talked about like five to six minutes on that, but that was like, it was, it was a lot. It, it, it drained me a lot. And eventually I ended up resigning from my job. Like I was so depressed and anxious over everything that I had found out going through what my family member was going through what happened to me in January everything was just piling up and then old cases started coming through in my head and I started like putting pieces together and I and I started thinking oh my gosh like what could I have done in this situation if I was just like you know when you kind of have like those those moments like holy be and of course it reminded me of like old trauma of when i've been lied to because that's my thing lies lies trigger me because i've been lied to my whole life and when i got lied to when i was a kid it's just stuck with me so whenever i get lied to it, it really bothers me it just it hurts my feelings i'm like how can i trust you and that's what i went through with a lot of influencers and celebrities like i trusted you i even with disneyland when i found out about all that disneyland stuff my heart was literally broken. I was, I literally mourned the whole image of Disneyland. Like I couldn't believe that Disneyland lied to me, <laughs> that they did all this allegedly to like children. And there, cause there is, there's a, there's a victim out there. She lives in Australia and she's still alive, you know? And it, it's this, this is, yeah. So I basically broke up with Disneyland. I, to me, it, it was, it was too much, like the allegations and then the racism that's been occurring in there since the longest. I mean, I visit Disneyland every weekend, so I would see how they would put their employees in certain places and areas and depending on their race. And also, too, just their inability to acknowledge that they're a racist brand and they can't admit and take accountability that they've been racist and been a part of the propaganda. And, of course, they're trying to do damage control with Coco and the Soul movie. I appreciate that, but at the same time, it's like, you're still ignoring me, you know? Like, Disneyland is a brand, and they're ignoring their valuable, like, customers, you know? Their fans, and, and it's just like, and that's when I said, you know what? Screw you. Screw you, Disneyland. I'm not going to waste my money. Why am I going to invest my money when you guys don't care about your customers? Well, when did that go away? When did that go away? Once we gave all our money up? I don't, I don't understand. So I basically broke up with Disneyland. And I tried to convince my son not to go to Disneyland anymore. But he really wanted the pass. But now the pass has been canceled. So it was like a blessing in disguise. You know, I was like, oh, okay. I don't have to go. I have a lot of footage. I'm still going to put out that footage for memories. Because there's a lot of fun things that we did. And I want to just put it out there so people can see and... But I'm gonna add my two cents in every each each video so that I so people know how I really feel about Disneyland. And even though I'm putting those videos out there, it's just gonna be a fun project for me to edit and you know um, just have fun in editing that type of funness because it is it's fun to edit like Disney videos and going out and I'm gonna buy new things to like um, improve my the editing stuff like features and little pop ups and all that stuff to, to make it just fun and different and. Uh, so that's that I am going to still do that. But I'm like I said, <laughs> like I was pretty much dead and I got rid of all my Disney stuff. I got rid of my Disney PJs. I just got rid of anything that had to do with Mickey. I, had, I don't want nothing to do with Mickey. I mean, I'm it's like I went through a breakup. I cried. I was pissed. I was mad. I couldn't stop talking baloney about it. I even to the point where my family was just like, please, Arsoli, stop talking about it. We get it. You don't like Disneyland anymore. I'm like, OK, <laughs> but I'm just going to stop talking about it. And then, of course, all the stuff with, like, um, the Jeffree Star and all that. Like, it correlated too much with what I was going through. Work, MK Ultra, their stuff that they were been projecting before all this came into light. And, I, and, like I said, I was putting things together. And I was like... <laughs> like and that's when I said, you know what, I need to make a video. I need to make a video. 
to at least let people know what I've been seeing on the outside, the way, like in a different way, you know? And, um, so that, that, that 2020 was man. But like I said, by the end of June, what was it? No, by the end of July, the 30th, I had, I had put myself on disability. I, I basically qualified. I was evaluated and they said, yeah, she's depressed and anxious. Don't know if it's home or work related. We don't know. So they were deciding if it was going to work, be workers comp or disability and all that shit. And I was just like, dude, I don't care. I don't care. I just, I cannot work. Like I can't, you know, I mean, and, and that's the thing is that I've been thinking about that for a whole year before I even got there. I was already thinking about it to some extent, like, should I continue? Should I not? Like it was already on my mind. And this was kind of like the cherry on the top when all this stuff happened. And, and I'm not even explaining what I went through with like certain cases, um, because that's just one situation. There was like three because I had a missing client. One of my client went missing. And that shit broke me. Once my client went missing. And, you know, with all this, like, people missing and the exploitation and the trafficking, it just, that's what just, pff, I just, pff. and it just, yeah. And then the Mason medallions, like, you know, I saw a vehicle with the Masons where I was working at and it just scared me. You know, I just didn't know what to think. And I just didn't want nothing to do with that world or I just didn't want anything to do with it anymore. I just, yeah. So to me, I felt like it was meant to be for me not to do that position anymore. And during the time that I was on disability, I was going back and forth about me going back to my position or not. Eventually, by September the 30th, I said, hell no, I can't. I've been doing, by the time I finally got approved for disability, because I was being investigated for about two months, I still hadn't gotten treat, treated. I wasn't going to therapy. I was fighting to get treatment. I was fighting and I was advocating for myself to like for them to make up their damn mind in regards to where I'm going to get treated because it, or, or what, what was I going to follow up? Workers come disability because they said, oh, wait, we got to make sure which one is is this. And then you're going to get your money. And then and then we're going to decide where you're going to get treated, whether it's through Kaiser or or over here who evaluated you. And I was like, and for those two months, I was just literally left hanging. And I said, I see what you guys are doing because the whole time I was declining medication. They're like, you need medication. I said, no, I don't want medication. I smoke too much marijuana. Why would I want medication? And of course, I wasn't really disclosing that in the beginning. At that time, I was smoking a shit ton of weed because I was so stressed that whole year. I used it as a coping mechanism. And because my tolerance was so high, I just was just like, <sighs> like, just, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. And I used it as a coping mechanism. I wasn't sleeping. It was horrible. And so anyways, by the time it was September the 30th and I got approved with disability, I said, you know what? Um, I still haven't gotten treated. I know for sure I don't want to go back to work. I realized me being off these two months has helped me not feel the way I felt like in the past. So I might as well like not go back. Like I'm just gonna bite the bullet. And because I've been able to pay up, because I paid off my car and I saved money and I did all that stuff ahead of time is what made me feel comfortable enough to quit. If it wasn't for me paying off my car, because I'm telling 2020, since we weren't going anywhere and I wasn't spending a lot of money because I spent a lot of money when I was going to Disneyland. It was a waste of money. <laughs> a waste. But hey, I got to learn from that situation. But because I wasn't going to Disneyland, I was able to save up and I was making like $900 payments on my car payment. I wanted to pay it off before the due date, which the due date was actually this month. I would have paid off my car this month, but I paid it off by like, I think it was October or September. And I was so happy and excited that I was able to do that. Where like, I said, wow, like that's like $500 of a payment that I don't have to worry about once I decide wherever the heck I'm gonna go to in my future with a home or not or, or whatever. And so I decided quitting and then that's the time where I finally really focused on my therapy, doing therapy work twice a week, going to rehab classes about three to four times a week in the beginning and then doing my individual therapy and encouraging my son's father to do it too because when I was doing individual therapy of course I was like kept asking like I want to do couples therapy I want to do couples therapy and they're like well you need to do your own individual therapy before you even jump into couples therapy I said oh okay so that's what I've been doing and in the meantime I've been you know encouraging and reminding my son's father to do that and just barely barely these couple of months I've been going to therapy consistently 
consistently because I have the time and energy to do it. And really just slowly chipping away and doing things differently and just working towards my mental health progress so that when I get back into a new position or whatever the fudge I end up doing, I'm not going to feel stressed and overwhelmed or feel like I can't trust anybody because that's how I was at a point. I was like, I don't want to live like that where I don't trust people and stuff because it's not a nice way to live like that. And um, in the meantime of all that stuff, of course, you know, I was being honest with my partner and saying things like, you know, we have to utilize this time to work towards doing individual therapy and doing couples therapy so we can figure out if we're going to move forward and move into a house hopefully within a year or two or go our separate ways so that's still up in the air you know because we're barely starting to do therapy barely 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 so in a way it's kind of like a starting to like square one it's, it's kind of like we're learning how to be friends we really are <laughs> we're learning how to be friends and respectful towards each other learning how to communicate again and just focusing on ourselves and our sobriety so that we could come together and hopefully once we do the couples therapy we'll be able to heal and figure out a solution in the sense of like which direction are we going to go so i mean the goal is if if we end up being able to get to where we should be then I would move I would be moving out by hopefully by the end of by the end of next year uh in 2022 but if not then that means that I'm gonna stay with my mama <laughs> and just uh, uh work my booty off to hopefully one day get my own place and just get like an apartment or something and move out um but we'll see you know um uh, the good thing is that things are like calmed down and I'm glad that I waited to talk about it because during that whole time, I was like, oh, man. I was, like, running, like, a mile, 100 miles per hour. It was a lot. It was a lot. Like, just ugh. so mean and hostile and bitchy and angry and just, oof. It's a lot, you know. It's draining just to even see certain videos and things like, us oh, how pissed I was. And there's a lot of layers to that. So I can't wait till I talk to people about what I've learned in therapy and things. And because these are my top minds. Mines are like lies, rejection, lies, rejection, and um, lies and trust, I guess, is the same thing. But the rejection part is like I've been working towards it. And it all stems from like childhood stuff. It really does. I was able to, I'm able to commute to like kind of put two and two together when I'm able to talk to my therapist and we talk it through it's such a blessing having to talk to like a professional to kind of help you through your thoughts and especially if you have good rapport with them you you, you connect with the person then I connect with her you know and she's been extremely helpful and empathetic and guiding me through the process and I'm going to start doing DV classes I'm going to take domestic violence classes because virtually when you are put in an abusive situation you eventually become the abuser and that's what ended up happening with me i was like very verbally abusive and i started to be that way towards like my son because i was so frustrated and angry over my situation that i was just projecting my anger in other places and you tend to just attack people who are the safest to you you know and and so i'm gonna take dv classes because no matter what like how my therapist said is like you don't have to wait for the person to do it too like do it for yourself and it's the truth because no matter what if i jump into another relationship in the if i do go into another relationship in the future i don't want to take in old habits into that relationship and do the same tornado thing again i call it a tornado you know i'm not taking that tornado to another relationship and i want to reset you know we say and hopefully in the future i'll be able to take like my my parents and thankfully too my son has been extremely open to doing his own individual therapy and that's gonna be a huge huge thing and that's why i always encourage people if you want your child to do therapy if you want your teenager therapy 
And once you start to do it and they see that you're doing it, it's going to motivate them to be like, oh, okay, my mom and my dad are doing it or my caregivers are doing it, my sister, my brother, my aunt, they did it. And look at how much it's it's helped them. Like maybe I, I, I want to give it a try. So it's kind of like you got to model, you know, you got to be the first one. And so I'm glad that I was able to utilize the time that I had and, and I'm grateful that I had the, the, my, the money that I had saved to pay off what I needed to pay, I paid off everything, you know, I... And then I ended up purchasing things on credit with no interest so that I can get my equipment and the things that I needed so that I don't have to worry about that when I don't have a job because I want to improve all my editing stuff. And um, having a new computer really helps like just editing and doing things faster. It's just like, I realized like, damn, I can edit things faster. It's just, things are just so fast. Like, I can't believe I struggled so much with my old computer. <laughs> but hey, I made it work and I gave it to someone and hopefully, She's watching the video and hopefully she's utilizing the computer and having fun and being creative and using it for, using it for school, whatever, you know? Oh, and I decided to wear this gray hoodie because I just like it. I got it for Christmas, okay? It's a really nice sweater. My mom got it at Marshall's. Isn't it cute? Look at this cute sweater. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I got somebody passed by. A family member of mine. But what I was saying was Thank you everyone, um, I guess for like sticking through and I do still plan on doing mental health videos. There's a lot of things that I've been wanting to do, but my job just took a lot of my time and energy and you know, I used my job to escape a lot <laughs> of my problems at home. And I also use social media to escape my problems at home. So I'm glad that I took a break from social media because I also did do that. I took a break from social media and I just wasn't really going into specific apps and I was like unfollowing, unsubscribing and just like changing certain settings so that I don't get to see or rec get recommended certain things that could be triggering for me. It's not going to help towards like my progress because eventually once you feel okay, I guess you can see those things. I don't mind seeing those things once I'm okay. It doesn't really bother me. I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. And I hope that people are still interested. You know, I'm doing this for anyone who is wanting to learn about ADHD and all the things that I've learned in the field. There's so many videos, a lot of videos that I want to put on top of just creative videos that I have in my head that I've been wanting to do and I haven't put out there. There's like this idea that I have that I want to do with Hot Cheetos <laughs> that I don't think anyone has done. Uh, there's, and then there's other ideas that I wanted to do with like arts and crafts with Disney because this was before I decided to break up with Disney. And this is a really good crafty idea that I think kids could do when they go. You know, I can't change kids' mind, but I can encourage you to be crafty. <laughs> and I have all the equipment and I have, I have all the materials to do what I did. And no one, ha no one has done it. So I was like, I, I'm going to do that. And then on top of just sharing my story, sharing certain topics, sharing certain opinions and thoughts about certain topics are just being rolled out in the in the in the just um youtube community anything you know like that had some some type of substance of mental health or things that i have some expertise and i'm gonna put in my little two cents you know and other other creative things that i kind of want to tap into but i'm not gonna stop doing mental health videos until i run out of material and i haven't run out yet until that day comes I will announce and say, I'm done. <laughs> like, there's nothing else for me to post out there with content. Um, I'll probably remake certain videos because I know the video quality or the audio quality is very, very poor. And I think that a lot of the information that's provided in some of my old videos is really, really valuable and informative. So I probably will be doing, redoing some videos for just better audio for people who really can't, like, don't want to listen or hear because it sounds like crap. Just, I don't blame you, you know? I, I watch and I hear myself and it even bothers me sometimes. So I feel you on that. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate everybody, like I said, that continues to follow me and watches my stuff and, and the new people that have subscribed to me. If you have any ideas or topics that you want me to tap into, don't be shy. Let me know. Comment, DM me, email me, do what you got to do. And I will do my best. And I'll be honest with you, like, oh, no, that's just not... I can't tap into that part. Like, I don't really know that much on that area or I'll figure something out. Or if I can figure something out, I will tap into it. And I do plan on wanting to do interviews. There's so many people out there that I've been wanting to interview about their mental health and just certain things that they've gone through in social media, their personal life. 
And of course, it all just depends if they agree to get interviewed or not. Kind of like what I did with Eli. He was my first one on 2020 and my last for 2020. So I still do want to interview people who are, who are willing enough to who want to get interviewed. Because like I said, trust is a big thing and I understand that too. So gonna, I'm ready for a lot of rejection. So I'll talk to everybody later. Bye. Before I let you go, I'm going to show you what I've been doing, okay? This has been therapy, extremely therapeutic. Look at this. Look at it. <laughs> oh, wait. I look at this. What is this? Look at this. These are strawberries. We got yolk chilies. You got tomatoes. And then we got all this. We got the radishes. We got the lettuce. And we got the sweet onions. And that's <laughs> what I've been doing. Um, as an intervention and a coping skill, and it's been helping out tremendously. And this is the thing that I'm most proud of. Wait. Look at this. What do you guys think this is? Cilantro. It's cilantro. <laughs> this is my baby right here. It's my baby.